The hit documentary on Netflix is touching a nerve. The film is called Minimalism. It follows different people as they pare down their lives to make room for the important things. Here's a clip from a father of four on why his family wants to live simpler. Just consistently, I would run into parents who are just worn out and stressed and fatigued, uh, not just from working their job, but coming home and their home isn't, isn't calm. Uh, their home isn't restful, but their home is a, a disaster and a, a mess and a wreck and, and they have to spend their Saturday mornings cleaning it up and, and their evenings taking care of it. And I've, I've just come to realize it doesn't have to be that way. You know, that, that life is better owning less and it allows us to be a, a better, closer family. The whole idea is to live with less, to find more, more happiness, more fulfillment, and more meaning. But you might say, nice idea, but not everyone can totally downsize their home and ditch all of their stuff. So today we're sharing realistic ways to clear your mind and space and make room for what matters most. Studio 5 contributor and Back to Basics founder, Connie Sokol, joins me with her take on the topic. Connie, yes. right, you're the expert in all things <laughs> oh, women. Yeah. We're oh, looking yeah, to you it. on the minimalist movement. Oh. What do you like about it? Do you know what I love? I love that concept is live more, live with less. I love that because I think in our busy lives, we focus on accumulating and what can we get to fill this certain thing rather than savoring what we have. I remember years ago, I knew a gal that I visited with and she was from France and she had very few pieces, but they were beautiful in her home. And she said, we knew in France, you didn't have a lot and you were gonna keep it a long time. So you chose carefully. And I love that it's meaningful, intentional. And I do think that is a little bit of a shift of mindset because we sometimes think of accumulating as actually um, progressing, right? right? Like it's, it's kind of the next step. Oh, right. I can move up to this bigger couch. I can move up to this right. nicer thing, bigger you know? home or right. whatever. Right. But maybe saving and doing things a little less. Yes, absolutely. And recognizing it's got to work for you. You know, I love the minimalist principles and things. And again, you've got to apply them in a way that works for you and ask yourself, is this bringing us joy? Is it, is it bringing us an environment that's making us feel like we're having more quality of life rather than I'm going with a trendy principle? Because, you know, I used to have to have the strollers and the baby bouncy seat and all of that. And that was really necessary for me to have this happy, joyful life. And now I don't need that. It doesn't mean that it didn't bring me joy or it, doesn't, it couldn't bring me joy now. It's just, I don't need it. So it's really important to go through and kind of assess what stage of life are we at and what things will really make it a quality of life. And I love that because it, you're making it sound like it doesn't have to be all or nothing because sometimes you see the show yes. or you talk to friends who are kind yes. of in on the movement and it feels like, oh gosh, I'm a bad person because I have right. crap and my shoved under my bed. Right, yeah. right. I still got that hoard in that, that one office that you just close the door <laughs> or in every closet right, right? exactly but no, you no. don't you know pick and choose what Absolutely. works for you and then you bring up another good point which is that it's not just about your home it's not just about the physical space you live in but also yes. about your mind yes absolutely because they're so connected and you know that I call it my my get set principle because I know when I'm I'm thinking in my mind I can't get clear I make the beds and then if I really can't get clear I'll clean off the kitchen counter and then I'll clear up the floors and if I don't deep clean it's just I've just got to have this kind of put away space so I can think and I can breathe and then all of a sudden like it'll go ch -ch -ch -ch, and I get that you know organization in my mind that I need it really is a satisfying feeling in your soul when you have that clear space yeah it's so interesting because it does it sometimes does reflect right oh, what your absolutely. environment is to your mind and you can totally feel it in fact I was cleaning out drawers like you couldn't even see anything on the outside but I was cleaning out drawers and my daughter came home she said you know what mom you can tell that you've been decluttering and it's funny because there's like a lighter feeling it's it's a really true principle <laughs> Oh. There's something very therapeutic about yeah. it. And you have strategies for kind of everyday families. Yes. What they can do. Your first one, you say, observe and adjust. Space. That's right. Take a look around before you jump in and do this big overhaul. That's what we women are so known for is we just think, I'm going to do the entire kitchen today. <laughs> and then halfway into it, we're sitting down with a thing of cupcakes. So it's really just <laughs> observing. And then I love to do a little sketch. I just say, what do I want it to look like? How does the space being used? And how do I want it to be used? And that's two different things. My kitchen counter, They'll put backpacks and school papers and things. That's not what it's used for. So I have to keep making sure kids remember the system and the rhythm. And 
and make it work for you. Like for example, in our cabinet, I would stuff the chips, right? And then they get crunched and then people would open half open bags and it'd be all over the, kit the, the <laughs> cabinet shelf. You know what I mean? It drove me nuts. Then I got wise and I just got this big basket and put it in the corner cabinet counter where nobody goes. And it's just these big bags and I rolled them down and I had the clips. So now it's set away, but they're all standing and they're not smushed. Super simple, but that works for me, so. And I think you hit on something that speaks to a lot of people is that you, we have these things that you're calling family hotspots. Right? Yes, these hot spots are so crucial. You have to go through and decide what are the, the spots that drive you crazy because you're the mom and you'll be the one that's bugged by it. So I went through and identified it's the entryway, the living room, the kitchen counter, and then what works for me has been different in different stages of the kids' lives. So right now what works for me is I give everybody a love good morning and then at seven o'clock and then while they're getting ready and they don't need as much help with their hair and stuff now, I go around and do a 15 minute pickup. That's all I do. Now I could have them do it and I've done that in the past, but I go around and I hit those hot spots I'm ready for the day. I'm happier, I'm nicer. It's just a good thing. So choose those hot spots. And then second, look at your rhythm hot spots. So for me, that means communication. I've got to have communication centers. I have the kids stuff on individual clipboards and you can use binders, you can use stand up holders, you can use trays, whatever works for you. I have it on individual clipboards and then I put them on a big family board. So that whenever they have scout stuff or important stuff, I have them stick it on that, that clipboard and it saves my sanity. And this also speaks to kind of that sanity, the mind connection with organizing space and kind of minimalizing things there that when you can have that clarity of mind and know these are my priorities for the day and and, and set that out I mean you said I wake up I go give loves to my littles and then I move on to the next thing that's right and just knowing you know that's got to happen first that's right. That becomes kind of one of your steps in this must happen today. This and that helps me get that clarity and it gives me stress free. My son is leaving for Peru in a few days, couldn't find his passport. I couldn't. He took the clipboard off. That was a big blasphemy. And so I went to go find it, found it in his clothing rubble because I knew what I was looking for, a clipboard. And there was the passport. Save me stress. <laughs> Save me stress. And I think a lot of this becomes a little overwhelming because we think, oh gosh, where do I even start? <laughs> it's a <laughs> constant battle, right? Yes. Like, I can't do it. It's too overwhelming. Yes. So you say start small. Absolutely. In fact, before I even knew about this whole minimalist thing, I did not know I was out of the know. But what started for me was I got a new purse. And so cleaning out that purse was so cathartic. And then I did a desk, my desk, and then I did some drawers, and then I did a room, and then I did some old papers. And it was like this domino, which is what it does. It domino effects because you get that taste. You get that clear space taste and you go, oh, I want it, I want it again, I want it more. And so and then your soul feels cleaned out and you feel more mojo and it's just this beautiful cycle. So yes, start small, don't go for the big overhaul, start with five things or start with one counter and you will feel that progression. Connie, you say it so well, we love your story. They <laughs> illustrate things perfectly. Tell us where we can find out more. ConnieSocal.com, get my email weekly boost. It tells you my Facebook live schedule, my free webinars and a free download. It's a big orange button, just click on it and you get all of that information. Awesome, thanks so much, Connie. Thanks.